All right, for this video, we're going to be palpating the pubic bone and the ischial bone and all of their bony landmarks and proving the landmarks. So the first thing I'm going to have my partner, my body do is he's going to take a hand border like so and just put it across his pubic bone and just border for me. And I'm going to ask permission to palpate everything above your hand. Yeah. So two ways to approach the pubic bone. One, I can start at the ASIS and then I'm going to follow down along what's known as the inguinal ligament. And as I get down towards the bottom of the inguinal ligament, it will be connected to the pubic bone at the pubic tubercle. The other way that you can do it is starting at the umbilicus and slowly work your way down from the umbilicus. And when we hit the pubic bone, you should be right on top of the pubic symphysis. So I have the symphysis with this hand and I have the tubercle with this hand and in between that is going to be the pubic crest. For the symphysis and crest, I can use rectus abdominis by having him do a crunch. So you can go ahead, good. And for the lateral landmark, the tubercle, I'm gonna ask him to utilize the external abdominal oblique doing a crunch and rotation away. Great. While I'm here, I'm going to explain the superior pubic ramus. Uh, below the inguinal ligament off this pubic tubercle is going to be the superior pubic ramus. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop down inside the femoral triangle. I'm going to passively flex up his leg to try to soften up some of the flexor adductors and I'm going to sink down underneath. So the inguinal ligament is just above my hands. I'm in the femoral triangle heading up. Make sure you're not squishing the femoral artery at this point, but I'm gonna ask him to do a little bit of flexion adduction with his thigh, and that will activate pectineus, which we'll revisit later on. The second bordering I'm gonna ask my partner to do is reach in from the side and move genitalia out of the way, so with his opposite hand, and I'm gonna be bringing his leg up into what we call a figure four. So with my knee underneath his, his knee, I want his adductors to be as relaxed as possible. We're gonna be looking for one of the main adductors in what is known as adductor longus. And adductor longus originates on the body of the pubis. So what I'm gonna ask my partner to do here is to bring his knee across his body. Good, and there should be a fairly large muscle and tendon that sticks up, and for him it's right about here. I'm gonna follow that slowly back. Again, make sure the person is boarding correctly. And as you follow it back, you're gonna run into bone. And the origin, again, of this muscle, adductor longus, is on the body of the pubic bone. So we have the inguinal ligament above that and the superior pubic ramus above that. But as I'm gonna drop just below, so the body was here, I'm gonna go just inferior to that tendon, adductor longus. And this is going to be the origin of gracilis on the body and the inferior pubic ramus. So as I drop below the body, I'm gonna sink into the muscle tone. I'll do that again and then push up until I feel bone. And this is going to be the inferior pubic ramus. GM now. So I'm gonna ask my person to turn over into the prone position. We're gonna start off with one of the easiest landmarks, which is the ischial tuberosity. You're looking in and around that gluteal fold that changes between glute to hamstring. I'm gonna use the palm of my hand as a larger object to try to feel a very easy to find large ischial tuberosity. This is the attachment of all three hamstrings plus other muscles. So if he starts to lift his leg up good, and right away I can feel the bulk of hamstring tendons attached to this ischial tuberosity. If I were to go slightly medial, and sink in a little bit, I'd be getting towards this ischial ramus, but we're gonna change his position one more time to make sure it's a little bit easier to find. I'm gonna have my person turn onto a sideline position. We're gonna take the top leg and bend it up out of the way, and we're gonna bring the back leg straight. The same way we approached the ischial tuberosity before, I'm gonna follow up towards the gluteal fold, sink in, I can activate the hamstrings again just to prove them on it, good. As I move anteriorly, as we're moving slowly towards the front, we're gonna go on to the ischial ramus first, and then that's gonna connect into the pubic ramus. A large muscle in this area is known as adductor magnus. So what I'm gonna ask my partner to do is lift his leg up off the table, great, and that is an easy confirmation of the ischio pubic ramus with adductor magnus. I'm gonna ask my body to go back into prone for our last landmark, which is gonna be known as the ischial spine. I'm gonna go back to that ischial tuberosity. <clears throat> as I find the medial edge of it, as you can see me rolling towards the medial edge, 
I want to follow that up superiorly. As I continue to follow it up superiorly, I'm going to get to a bony edge that feels like it's pointing towards this individual sacrum. I'm going to leave my finger here. Just to confirm, I'm going to put my hand on the sacrum, follow down its lateral border until I feel the inferior angle. That is an appropriate space in between the two of them, as this would be the ischial spine, and this would be the sacral angle, and in between the two of them, we will have the sacrospinous ligament.